just want to say over the last few years, I've been uh, had the opportunity to do this closing conference, and I've uh, had some incredible warm-up acts. Uh, about eight years ago, Billy Graham opened for me, and I thought that there was <laughs> thought that there was absolutely no way in hell to top that. But I just wanted to say and I mean this without irony, I think I can speak for everybody in the audience when I say that I wish to God that you were the President of the United States. Okay, this is the title of my talk today. <laughs> I just want to uh, give you a quick overview. First of all, please remember, I'm completely politically correct, and I mean everything with great affection. If any of you have sensitive stomachs or are feeling queasy, now's the time to check your BlackBerry. <laughs> just to review, this is my TED Talk. We're going to do some jokes, some gags, uh, yeah, some little skits, and then we're going to talk about the L1 point. <clears throat> So, the, one of the questions I ask myself is, was this the most distressing TED ever? <laughs> Let's try and sum things up, shall we? Images of limb re regeneration and faces filled with smallpox, 21% of the conference. Mentions of polar bears drowning, 4%. <clears throat> Images of the earth being wiped out by flood or bird flu, 64%. And David Pogue singing show tunes. Because this is the most distressing TED ever, I've been working with Neil Gershenfeld on next year's TED bag. And if the, if the conference is anywhere near this distressing, then it, we're going to have a scream bag next year. <laughs> it's going to be a cradle to cradle scream bag, of course. So you're going to be able to go like this. Meanwhile, back at Ted University, this wonderful woman is teaching you how to chop sun chips. So Robert Wright, I don't know, I felt like if there's anyone that Helen needed to give antidepressants to, it might have been him. I want to deliberately interfere with his dopamine levels. He was talking about uh, morality. Economy class morality is, we want to bomb you back to the Stone Age. Business class morality is, don't bomb Japan, they build my car. And first class morality is, don't bomb Mexico, they clean my house. Yes, it is politically incorrect. All right. Now I, I want to do a, a, a thing where you. Uh... All right. All right. Now I just like white say to the right. In the front, you want to make sure that the right one of the right one is right. Well, they're all like, la da! So I wanted to show you guys. I wanted to talk about a revolutionary new computer interface that lets you uh, work with images just as easily as you, it is a completely natural user interface. <laughs> and you can, you can use really natural uh, hand gestures to like go like this. <laughs> now we had a Harvard professor here, she was from Harvard, I just wanted to mention, and, and, and she was actually a professor from Harvard. <clears throat> And she was talking about uh, seven-dimensional inverted universes with, you know, of course, there's the gravity brain, there's the weak brain, and then there's my weak brain, which is too, too absolutely uh, weak to understand what the fuck she was talking about. <laughs> now... <laughs> one of the things that's very important to me is to try and figure out what on earth am I here for? And that's why I went out and I picked up a best-selling business book. You know, it basically uses its central premise, uh, Greek mythology. And uh, it's by a guy named Pastor Rick Warren. And it's called 
uh, the porpoise driven life. <clears throat> and Rick is as a um, <clears throat> eighth, eighth, uh, pagan god, which I thought was kind of appropriate in a certain way. And um, now we're going to have kind of a little bit of visu more visualization about Rick Warren. <clears throat> Okay. <laughs> All right. Now red is Rick Warren and green is Daniel Dennett, okay? <laughs> the scales here are religi religiosity from 0% or atheist to 100% Bible literally true. And then this is uh, books sold, the logarithmic scale. 30,000, 300,000, 3 million, 30 million, 300 million. Okay, now they're duking it out, now they're duking it out. <laughs> and Rick Warren's kind of pulling ahead, kind of pulling ahead. Yep, and his uh, installed base is getting a little bigger. <clears throat> But Darwin's dangerous idea is coming back. It's coming back. Let me turn the trails on so you can see that a little bit better. <laughs> now, one of the things that's very important is Nicholas Negroponte talked to us about one lap dance. Per I'm sorry. <clears throat> about one laptop per child. <laughs> now let's talk about some of the characteristics that are important for this revolutionary device. I'll tell you a little bit about the design parameters and then I'll show it to you in person. First of all, it needs to be small, it needs to be flat so it's transportable, lightweight, portable, uses very, very liberal power, very, very high resolution, has to be visible in bright daylight, will work anywhere, and broadly applicable across many platforms. Now we've actually, uh, done some research, Neil Gershenfeld and the Fab Labs went out into the market. They did some research, we came back, and we think we have the perfect prototype of what the students in the field are actu actually asking for. And here it is, the $100 computer. <laughs> okay, 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 oh, excellent, excellent. <laughs> Now, I bought this device from Clifford Stoll for about 900 bucks. <clears throat> and he and his team of uh, junior high school students were doing real science. So we were trying to check, and we were trying to douse here and see who uses marijuana. <laughs> see who uses marijuana. Are we gonna be able to find any marijuana, Jim Young? <laughs> Only if we open enough locker doors. <clears throat> okay. Now, smallpox is an extremely distressing illness. We had Dr. Larry Brilliant talking about how we eradicated smallpox. I wanted to show you the stages of smallpox. We start, <clears throat> this is day one. <laughs> day two, day three, she gets a massively big pox on her shoulder. Day three, <laughs> day four, <laughs> day five, and day six. Now the good news is because I'm a trained medical professional, I know that even though she'll be scarred for life, she's gonna make a full recovery. <laughs> now the good news about uh, Architects for Humanity is they're really kind of the most amazing group. They've been sponsoring a design competition to come up with innovative medical housing solutions, clinic solutions uh, in Africa, and they've had a design competition. Now the wonderful thing is Larry Brilliant was just ahead, appointed the head of the Google Foundation, and so he decided that he would, support, uh, he would support Cameron's work. And the way he decided to support that work <coughs> was by shipping over 50,000 shipping containers of Google Snacks. <laughs> so I want to show you some prototypes. The UN, you know, they took 20 years just to add a flap to a tent. But I think we have some more exciting things. Uh, this is a home made entirely out of fruit roll-ups. <laughs> uh. 
and those roll-up cookies with coated in with white chocolate. And the really wonderful thing about this is when you're done, well, <laughs> you can eat it. <laughs> but the thing that I'm really, really excited about is this incredible granola house. <laughs> And the granola house has a special sun chip roof to collect water and recycle it. And as well, on this side, it has regular Sour Patch Kids and gummy bears to let in the light. <laughs> but on this side, it has sugary gummy bears to diffuse the light more slightly. And we, we wanted just to show you what this might look like in situ. <laughs> So Einstein, Einstein, tell me, <clears throat> what's your favorite song? No, I said, what's your favorite song? No, I said, what's your favorite song? Freebird. <laughs> okay, so Einstein. What's your favorite singing group? Could you say that again? What's your favorite singing group? Okay, one more time. I'm just going to give you a little help. Your favorite singing group, it's Diana Ross and the... Supremes! Exactly! <laughs> Can we have the sound up on the laptop, please? Um, Freebird kind of reminds me that if you, if you listen to Freebird backwards, this is what you might hear. Satan. 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 Now, it's a little hard to hear the whole message, so I wanted to... So I wanted to help you a little bit. My sweet Satan, Dan Dennett worships Satan. Buy the purpose-driven life or Satan will take your soul. So, we've talked a lot about global warming, but you know, as Jill said, you know, it sounds kind of nice, good weather in the wintertime in New York City. And as Jay Walker pointed out, that is just not scary enough. Mm. So, Al, I actually think I'm rather good at branding. <clears throat> so I've, I've tried to figure out a, a good design process to come up with a new term to replace global warming. So we started with blabblefish. <laughs> we put in global warming. And then we decided that we'd change it from English to Dutch into het global vervormen. <laughs> from Dutch to Chinese into hoja <laughs> hoda Chinese to Portuguese, aquiarse global. Then Portuguese to Pig Latin. <laughs> aquiarse octve. <laughs> and then finally back into the English, which is we're totally fucked. <laughs> Now, I don't know about you, but Michael Shermer talked about the uh, willingness for human beings, evolutionarily, they're designed to see patterns in things. For example, in cheese sandwiches. Now, can you look at that carefully and see if you see the Virgin Mary? Let's I'm try to make it a little clearer. Is it the Virgin Mary? Uh, or is it Mina Trot? So we talked to Joss Price Ramis about this convention center and the conference. It's getting awfully big. It's getting just a little bit too big. It's bursting at the seams here a little bit. So we tried to come up with a program how we could remake this structure to better accommodate Ted. So first of all, we decided <laughs> that we needed about one-third bookstore, one-third Google Cafe, about 20% registration, 80% luxury hotel, about 5% for restrooms. And then, of course, we wanted to have the simulcast lounge, the lobby, and the Steinbeck Forum. Now, let me show you the, how that literally translated into the design program. So first, <laughs> one of the problems with Monterey is that if there is global warming and Greenland melts, as you say, the ocean level is going to rise 20 feet and flood the hell out of the convention center. So we're going to build this new building on stilts. So we build this building on stilts. Then up here, <laughs> 
is where we're going to put the new Steinbeck Auditorium. <laughs> and the wonderful thing about the new bookstore is it's going to be shaped in a spiral that's organized by the Dewey Decimal System. <laughs> then we're going to make an escalator that helps you get up there. <clears throat> And finally, we're going to put the Marriott Hotel and the Portola Plaza on the top. Now, I don't know about you, but sometimes I have these images in my head of separated at birth. I don't know about you, but when I see Aubrey de Grey, I immediately go to Gandalf the Grey. <clears throat> okay, now, we've heard, of course, that we're all soldiers here. So what I'd really, really like you to do now is pick up your white piece of paper. Does everybody have their white piece of paper? And I want you to get out a pen, and I want you to write a terrorist note. <clears throat> if we put up the Elmo for a moment, if we put up the Elmo, then we'll get, you know, I'll give you a model that you can work from, okay? <laughs> and then, then I want you to fold that note into a paper airplane. And once you fold it into a paper airplane, I want you to take some anthrax, <laughs> and I want you to put that in the paper airplane, and I want you to throw it on Jim Young. <clears throat> Luckily, I was the recipient of the TED Prize this year. <clears throat> and I wanted to see, I want to dedicate this film to um, my father, Homer. Okay. Now, this film isn't really hard enough, so I wanted to make it a little bit harder, so I'm going to try and do this while reciting pi. Two five nine two five six two four. Can we cue the music, please? <clears throat> this talk to talk about global warming a little bit. Back in 1968, you can see that the mountain range of Brokeback Mountain was covered in 151 inches of snowpack. Parenthetically, over there on the slopes, I did want to show you that black men ski. But over the years, Ten years later, the snowpacks eroded, and if you notice, the trees have started turning yellow. The water level of the lake has started drying up. A few years later, there's no snow left at all, and all the trees have turned brown. This year, unfortunately, the lake beds turned to an absolute crack dry bed. And I fear, if we do nothing for our planet, in 20 years, it's going to look like this. Mr. Vice President, I wish I knew how to quit you. Thank you very much. <laughs>